the message this morning is saying no to the fear of man. Please say that with me. Saying no to the fear of man. I am going to move through a little bit faster perhaps than I would normally because there are a number of important things that I feel need to be covered. And I didn't want to split this into a two-part session, but uh, I'm trusting God to help me just to bring it together together effectively in the time that we do have allocated. So, say no to the fear of man. That is the title this morning. Now, I want to begin by asking you a question. And, uh, and in asking this question, I, I want to say to you, like my dad used to say, please tell the truth and shame the devil, okay? The question is this, how many of you are prepared to admit that you struggle with the fear of man. My hand's up. You say, shucks, pastor, should you really be preaching? <laughs> I thought pastors are immune from stuff like this. Let me 
ask you another question. How many of you aren't prepared to admit it because you're afraid of what other people will think? <laughs> I see those hands. I see those hands. Now, I get a sense, folks, that, is, that there is far too much fear of man even in the lives of believers nowadays. And it is a problem. It's not okay. It's a problem that is hindering the people of God and it needs to be spoken about. I don't know if I have ever heard a sermon preached specifically on the fear of man. Lots of sermons preached about fear in general. But it's something that we need to speak about. Thankfully, the Bible speaks into this matter and presents us with the wisdom that we all need. It's wonderful how many things the Bible speaks into. And so, thank the Lord for the wisdom that comes through His Word. Amen? Now, allow me to share a simple scripture with you this morning. And this is the most important one that I'm about to go into now. A simple scripture this morning, but I believe that this verse of scripture could possibly change your life. It's found in Proverbs 29, verse 25. It says, the fear of man brings a snare. Think about that for a moment. Let that just sink in. This is tremendous wisdom from the Word of God. The fear of man brings a snare. It goes on to say, but whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Praise the Lord. The same verse is put very interestingly in the Good News Bible, it says, it is dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. Wow, isn't that so touching us where we live? <laughs> it's dangerous to be concerned with what others think of you. But if you trust the Lord, you are safe. Another one, same, ver same verse in the message translation. It says, the fear of human opinion disables I'd like to even say that it paralyzes. The fear of human opinion disables. Trusting in God protects you from that. So here we have the wisdom of God speaking into a very real situation. I have four points that I'd like to share with you. The last one is a brief one. The first one, number one, the fear of man is a very real problem that most of us face, if not all of us. I want to say it again, the fear of man is a very real problem that most of us face. The fear of, of, of man can paralyze us from taking action when we should take action. It can silence us when we should speak out, but we don't speak out because we're worried, we're afraid of people. The fear of man is a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. And it's something that we should have victory over. Now, the fear of man, it actually feels very powerful when you're faced with it. But as we look at the Word of God, it seems like, no, that power is actually very deceptive. It's not a real power. It, there is a deception in that. And our verse for today, Proverbs 29, 25, there it is. The fear of man brings a snare. Please say that with me. The fear of man brings a snare. This is the most important verse I want to encourage you to learn uh, as a result of the message today. Now, let me try to illustrate the kind of fearful thoughts that we grapple with. And it was difficult for me to try to capture this, but I did the best I could just to give a sense of the little issues and fears and insecurities and struggles and things that we go through. Here's just a couple of things that I wrote of uh, fearful thoughts that we grapple with related to the fear of man. Here they are. Oh no, he's looking at me. <laughs> What's he thinking? What's he thinking? Do I look okay? Someone's coming, someone's coming. I hear somebody coming down the passage at work. Ooh, my toes cringe, my toes cringe. Ew. 
my toes cringe and curl up. Oh, who's it? Who's it? Who's it? Oh, okay, it's not so bad. They're bringing me tea. <laughs> Maybe I said the wrong thing. Shucks, maybe they misunderstood me. Clench your teeth. Mm, grind your teeth. <sighs> I'm stopped at the intersection in my car, waiting for the light to, to change at the intersection. Please don't look at me. Please don't look at me. Don't look at me. Anybody around me, don't look at me. No, no, no. Ooh, ooh. ooh no, they looked at me. They looked at me. <laughs> don't look at me. Don't look at me. It's green. Finally, I can go. I can go. I'm walking in the mall and you're thinking to yourself, uh, please don't make eye contact. I don't like, uh, it feels awkward. I just want to walk. I just want to look. I just want to look. I just, don't look at me. Don't look at me. I'm just going. I'm just going. I'm, fear, I'm fearful of man. I won't admit it. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. I can't lift my hands in, in church or, or at least not too high. I can't lift my hands. What are people going to think? If I lift my hands too high, what's my wife going to think? What's my husband going to think? They're going to think that I'm really loving Jesus, huh? you know? So in, instead of like lifting your hands properly in church, then you go to carrying the big screen TV mode. <laughs> Just carry the big screen TV. For some people, it's a bigger screen. <laughs> what are people going to think of me if they see my hands are actually lifted? What's it going what's to be like? Wow. What shall I do? I, I, I need to say no, but I can't say no. Because I have to say yes. They've asked me to come and I, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, but what must I do? I'm afraid, I'm fearful of man. Oh, oh shucks, I'm just scared, I'm just scared. I want to clench my fists, I want to clench my fists. Hopefully, hopefully nobody sees I'm clenching my fists. Man, and your toes are curling up, your teeth are grinding. You know what? This is, at the root of it, it's the fear of man. We're fearful of people in general now, God's word uses a powerful picture. It uses the picture of a snare to describe just how dangerous the fear of man is. Because I want to tell you the fear of man is not just a small thing. It is dangerous to your life. Now, let's put those two pictures on screen just to give you an idea. In terms of a snare, it's not a very commonly used term nowadays, but what is a snare? According to the Oxford Dictionary, it's a trap for catching small animals consisting of a loop of wire that pulls tight. That is what a snare is. Now, the significance of a snare from a spiritual point of view is that a snare, listen, is an instrument of death and of bondage. And the fear of man being a snare can be an instrument of bondage in your life and even of death in a person's life. Let me try to demonstrate how a snare works. I've got this little cable here, which is perhaps similar to a snare. All right, so I've got this cable here, and I'd like to ask if uh, one of the ladies would just mind coming and putting their neck in here for a moment. No, 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 no. I didn't expect that. <laughs> Girl, stay in your seat. <laughs> Thanks, precious. Now, here is, can I just get my farkis by my car now? <laughs> so here is the snare. Now what happens, this is put along a little pathway in the bush, in the forest, etc. And the idea is that the animal comes along, doesn't see the snare, and then it might be a little fox or a little, uh, a little diker, some sort of an animal, and it comes along, and then it puts its head into the snare, and it begins to feel something, and instead of realizing the danger and pulling out, it doesn't realize the danger, it gets scared, and the first thing it wants to do is pull forward. And so it pulls forward, and suddenly it's getting, it's getting struck. <laughs> It's getting, it can't get loose. It's getting into bondage. And pretty much, it's very unlikely that it will get out of the snare. And the animal will end up dying as a result. Now, God gives us this picture of a snare. And he says, you've got to realize the fear of man is very dangerous. Don't play with the fear of man because it will bring bondage, no doubt. It will hinder you from being able to do what the Lord wants you to do in life. And so we need to understand that 
this is something that is dangerous and we need to take note of it. Let me give you a completely different example. I heard a story of a missionary. This missionary was a lovely man of God in his early 80s and he had been speaking at a church meeting. Uh, he had just completed yet another church pastorate. Sometimes he was doing mission work, sometimes pastoring a church for five years, then mission work, then pastorate and so on. And here he is, early 80s, take note, and he is telling the meeting this. He says this, this is the first time in my ministry that I haven't suffered from the fear of people. You kind of think, well, maybe by the time you're 80, you threw it. No more fear of people. I, I don't know, yeah. But he's admitting that he struggles and has struggled his whole life. But he says, now for the first time, I'm ministering without the fear of people. He says, through all the earlier years, he feared. He feared the missions board. He feared the members. He feared the deacons. He feared losing his salary. And now he reached the point where he frankly actually couldn't care about it. It was remarkable that here this 80-year-old man was saying this. It was remarkable not so much that he struggled, but that he was prepared to admit it. I can imagine many younger pastors and leaders in that meeting would have thought to themselves, wow, sure, let this be an encouragement to me that I'm not gonna go through my whole life and only at the age of 80 actually deal with something like this. Peter the disciple boldly stated that he was willing to go to prison and even die for Jesus. Yet within hours, he denied knowing Jesus to a young servant girl. The fear of man brings a snare. I do wanna say this, that there's nothing wrong with having a good reputation. And Proverbs speaks of having a good reputation and a good, repu a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold. So having a good reputation is commendable, but here's the thing. It is wrong to serve your reputation. It is wrong for you to live for your reputation. If we were to define what the fear of man is in a nutshell, I would submit to you that the fear of man is when you begin to worry too much or to care too much about what others are thinking about you. It begins to become an issue what others think of you. So much so that it begins to control what you do and the choices that you make and it hinders and brings us into bondage. By the way, the fear of man is two-sided. On the one side, it craves approval. On the other side, it fears rejection. So it's like, it's like, accept me, accept me, approve me, tell me I'm nice, tell me I'm okay. Uh, don't reject me, don't reject me, accept me, accept me, don't reject me. This is what the fear of man actually does in our secret thoughts and hearts and lives. But ultimately, here's the problem. The fear of man places people in the place of God, and do you know what you call that? Idolatry. I would submit to you that the fear of man, according to scripture, would actually be considered sin. And it's something that God, through being in Christ, wants to set you free from that bondage in your life. Listen to the statements on your screen. The one we fear is the one that we obey. And so if the fear of God is an issue in your life, then you would tend to be a people pleaser. It means such a lot to you to keep people happy. But if it's not such an issue in your life, the fear of man, then you would be a God pleaser. Now, John 12, verse 43 is on your screen. It says, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. And it's interesting, the context is during Jesus' ministry. During Jesus' ministry, there were some senior officials who actually believed in Christ but they were not prepared to admit it. Do you know why? For fear of the Pharisees. My goodness. If you deny me before men, I will deny you before my Father in, in heaven. But Jesus says, if you acknowledge me, child of God, if you acknowledge me, Jesus, before men, I will acknowledge you before the Father who is in heaven. And so I wanna say, don't be an approval junkie. Be a God pleaser. Tell the person next to you, be a God pleaser. 
Now, I had to overcome the fear of man. Well, at times in my life, this is something that I deal with, that I wrestle with. One particular time, I remember I was about 19 years of age, and I had to overcome the fear of man in order to step out of my comfort zone and begin to lead worship for the first time at the age of 19. Now, let me tell you this. I had always been so comfortable drumming in my dad's church. I started drumming at about 11 years of age, and uh, at that point in time, 19 years of age, I'd been drumming for a bunch of years. I loved it, loved it. I still love drumming. Don't really get time to do it, but... You see, I felt that God was saying, John, you have to get out from behind those drums, and I want you to begin to lead worship. (sighs) Who me, Lord? (laughs) Now, let me tell you about, in my situation, being a drummer, it's generally you at the back of the stage, you're covered by drums around you, you're covered by cymbals, and you feel safe. And if there's one person in the audience that makes you nervous, you adjust your cymbal, and you just get it in, in their way. You don't want to see that face. No, no, no. And so this was a big thing for me. I was so comfortable, but the Lord said, I want you to get out of your comfort zone, go to the youth pastor, tell him, you can see the worship is falling apart here at the youth. Uh, can I get a chance to actually lead uh, a band here, he says, well, you drum, who's going who's gonna to sing? I said, well, me, me, <laughs> Johnny Bear. We, I'm going to sing, and then I had a couple of buddies, electric guitarist, uh, bass guitarist, drummer, and you know what? Here, it was given the green light, and I stepped out of my comfort zone, and I began to lead worship at the age of 18 for the first time, and something wonderful opened up in my life, which God has continued over many years. It's brought me such joy. But imagine if I said to the fear of man, ah, yes, 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 I'm saying yes to the fear of man. Imagine I would have missed out on so much of what the Lord wanted to do. Let me say this. The fear of man is like a snail hiding in its shell. That's where there's no progress. But to move ahead, the snail must come out of the shell. Let me tell you, I believe God might be speaking to some people here today. And he's telling you to come out of your shell. 